He's afraid he'll have to sing. Not gonna sing. But as a small token of our esteem appreciation for the heroic deeds of Wanda, I would like to, as mayor, present her uh, golden key to the city of oh, oh, oh. Exactly when it was bought, but 
we're not getting to put the town to put streets and sewer and water in there. I just don't think it's going to pan out because you might have one house that wouldn't go back there. I think we can use uh, the money to help our city out. I just don't think that uh, a lot of us will never probably see it develop unless you guys know something I don't to bring people into town. I've never seen too much interest at all unless you guys have seen or heard or and if you have heard somebody, they need to come forward to the council. I've never heard anybody that would be interested to, uh, I remember when, uh, before Jerry Stephan bought that place out there, it was uh, Jim Hansen had it. He built those commercial uh, dryers, if I'm wrong, commercial dryers for these grain bands, and he had, a, he had it going pretty good for a while, and then all of a sudden it just died out. Nothing ever came back. So. I just can't see us holding on to that, and we could use that money to help our town out. So that's that's my reason. I don't know what the other council went. I've lived here all my life. I don't know what these other ones think. Do you guys want to talk about it? When I was on planning and zoning, we had this conversation a couple of times where the city <coughs> is not a developer. We need a developer to come in and develop the property. The city just doesn't do that. So it's open now to be purchased by a developer, and maybe Mike can speak to this too, uh, how we need a developer to come in, and if someone wants to develop the North Side Acres, but the city you know, hasn't done that historically, is it talking about doing that? And then like Larry said, there's other parts, there's a lot of other projects that we have going on that are very expensive, and so then we can use that one to go to other things. And to add to uh, Councilman Miller, is that the developer buys it, the developer puts the streets in, the developer puts the sewer and water lines in, with the ordinances of Croft and every cent. So it ain't the city put the roads and the sewer and water in, it's whoever buys it and he wants to develop it. He's the one that does all that to, with the, the direction of our city codes. Am I correct? That's perfectly said. It is, that's a great idea for a developer to come in. So, but nothing against farmers. The farmer buys it, then it's never available. Well, we, we would all, love to hear suggestions. If you have ideas or thoughts about selling the property, please share it. How do you feel about that? Do you think we should selling the property? Yes, like, like I said, if you sell it to a developer, it's awesome because then it gets developed. But if you sell it to somebody that's going to farm it, that might not ever happen again. Well, the public, so this decision is just about should we put it for sale or not? <laughs> we got to put it up to bids for anybody that wants to do it. We can't just say, our advice is a developer, he's going to get this property. It's got to be a fair and partial bid from anybody that wants to take it upon themselves and do whatever they want. But we can't just single out developers and so, you know, if some farmer wants to take it, that's, he's got to have a bid in there. So it comes out to be fair and equal to everybody instead of just certain people that are, can do it. And it's true, we're kind of landlocked going different directions. But the bottom line for prosperity, as a city, collectively, we've not been able to generate the resources to develop. It's just not in the cards right now. With all the grant applications that we have and things, it's just not in there. But, I mean, our biggest thing is, however it goes, it's gonna uh, generate tax revenue. If it's 30 new homes out there, and families in our community, and our community grows, it's, if it's agricultural, and so the, raises good crops there and, and makes money off of it. We, we, we can, our city can grow because of it. We have a tax base, however it is. You know, so that's why we're, we're impartial to this thing, like you said, but uh, I just want to see prosperity and that, that's, that's a place to grow. That is a place to grow. And you look around uh, and as uh, told by multiple farmers there, and it's true, we aren't making any more land. And so if somebody is excited or wants to take on that venture to do it, we encourage Developers and we'll do everything humanly possible as a city to help them. 
And if a farmer takes it and somebody in town wants to bring a business is, I'm sure the, the farmer and his other guy could probably come some kind of means of taking so many acres off of whatever he bought. It's a possibility, I don't know. Is the sewer going to run underneath that property? Or is it staying in the, the ditch? The what? The, the lagoon to the no. sewer to the lagoon. The new lagoon that we're getting? No. Is that what you're asking me? Is that a, you know, it's kind of a diagonal line to the Gunther property for the lagoon. I just wonder if it was. The, the route for the lagoon, for the sewer. The route, the route from the lagoon is going to start where the sewer plant is right now. It's going to go on the east side of Randy Ostamore's property till we hit the ball field. And we're going to go on Randy Phillips's pasture outside the fence of the ball field, follow that fence line, and go on back to the, the west of Randy, Phil, Randy Phillips's property, and then go straight north till we hit the right of way of road of Jim Murphy and I think Brian Weebaugh's got that property. It's going to be in the road ditch. It's going to follow the road ditch all the way out to where. Dave Shoemaker used to live on a Melvin Stewart place, if you people know where that is. And it's going to go in the middle of the road because we have real water on one side and we have a main water line on the other side of the road. We're going down the middle of the road till it hits past the asphalt and go down in the ditch on the west side and follow that ditch all the way around past Jeannie Langmeyer's and then go west to all the road ditches. No way this property is going to be in a right of way till we hit the 121, and I don't know what road that is across from Donnie Gunther. Go underneath that road to the north and follow it on the east side of 121. It's going to get out there maybe by, well, I don't know exactly where, but it's going to be out there by Chad Gunther. Go underneath Highway 121 and cut the field across of Dwayne Gunther's and get into where Dale Gunther got the property. It used to be the old Allen Foxhole. That's, that's the road. And we got underneath 121, we have permits and we're okay. They're going to put it in a big sleeve so our line is in a sleeve and they just don't lay it in dirt. So if there's ever a break, it stays in that sleeve and it don't contaminate nothing. And it's going to have one lift station. I don't know exactly where that lift station is to get it all the way out there to the, to the possible lagoon. So it's going to be four lagoons out there, stepping them down. And that's, that's where it is at this point. But that is the route they're going to take. And I just got to get easements from Dwayne Gunther, Randy Phillips, and Randy Osimor. The rest of it's all on the right away of the road. So that Northside Acres don't have nothing to do with the, the new lagoon that's getting put in. And that sounds to me like the way I talked to Mr. Miller. The money's going to be available probably in October of this year, and then they're going to send out for bids. All the surveying is done. It's just now we're waiting for the money to be released from the government, and then once that's released, he can send out for bids, and hopefully next spring or next year we can get started. Does that answer your question? Yes. Anyone else? If not, we uh, need a motion to close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second the motion. Motion's been made and seconded. Mulberry? Yes. Miller? Yes. Pikes? Yes. Okay. So was that to close it open or should we need to do just resume for a for anything? Yeah, because oh, okay, fantastic. So the first item in business is to approve the minutes from the January 16th, uh, 2024 meeting. There is a correction in them, just a corrective minutes, um, where we have the sale of property. I had uh, listed two um, properties and it's three, so I just corrected that. So I need a motion for corrected minutes. I'll make a motion for correct minutes for the January 16th meeting. Motion has been made and seconded. Miller? Yes. Heights? Yes. And well. Okay, the next item of, uh, on the, um, is to approve the claims for February. 
I'll make a motion to approve the things. I'll second it. Motion is made and seconded to approve the, approve the federal claims. Fights? Yes. Robert? Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we'll open for public comment at this point in time. If, as any other public that would like to address the council. Um, if not, thank you. And we'll be moving on. New business as Walker is here with uh, Nebraska Public Agency Investment Trust. Walker, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Quite the attendance for. I guess say this is pretty good. I go to a lot of city council meetings, and this is pretty good for attendance. They just knew you were coming, that's all. <laughs> and a cake. Yeah, I checked when I got in here if it was actually a council meeting because cake isn't generally norm. Uh, so my name is Walker Zolkowski. I'm with PMA Financial, and I'm here to talk to you about NPAIT, or also known as the Nebraska Public Agency Investment Trust. I don't know right? for it. quite a bit of work with um, your county treasurer, Lori. Um, but in pay, it's a basically it's a money market fund. It's been around for almost 30 years. It's a statewide board that oversees the fund. And it was created under um, Nebraska statutes like 30 years ago. Um, so I work for PMA Financial. We're hired by the in pay board to service the fund. So we're just the service providers. PMA, we serve as the uh, marketing agent, the investment advisor, and the administrator for the fund. But then the board also hires some others too. There's a custodian bank, it's UMB in Omaha. And then we have an attorney, it's Klein Williams in Lincoln. And then we have an auditor too. So at the end of the day, if you ever remember anything, NPA, it's just a money market fund only for public entities in Nebraska. And we work with, well, it originally was started by the NRDs, the NREA, and NACO, the county officials. Um, but it's grown significantly since then. So we work with hospitals, cities, villages, um, schools, irrigation districts, power districts, um, pretty much anything that's uh, the public tax dollars. And that's the whole point of what the fund is, is dealing with public entities. Safety is the number one component of it. Um, liquidity, so you always have access to your cash. Um, and then the third part's yield. And you wanna make some money on your reserves, your public dollars, but safety and liquidity are the two most important components to it. Um, and then yield obviously kind of comes in there. And that's truly why NPA was created, was that on your own, um, it's tough to sometimes find what the best investment is or if you're making the best decision. By being part of this investment pool, you're pooling your funds together with hundreds of other public entities and you know, hundreds of other millions of dollars around the state. And then you share the economies of scale. So you're only paying for one audit, you're only paying for one attorney, and you share those economies. And as the fund grows, the yield goes up and the costs around it goes down. So the rate today is 5.35%. That's just your daily rate. There's no obligation to keep your funds in there. If you need access to them today, you put in an ACH, they land in your business bank the next business day. All right, questions? I've thrown a lot at you so far. So how big an investment group are we talking? I mean, is there multi-million dollars, or how many cities are we, what are we looking at? Um, the total of the fund? The fund is probably, well, it's getting close to a billion dollars in total. And there could be, we have clients that have maybe $20,000 in there, and there's clients that have a couple hundred million dollars in there. So that's what the point of it. You share the benefit of those economies by all pooling together. So there's no minimums, no maximums. You're not required to use the fund. It's just, according to state law, you have to pass a resolution to say we want to be a participant in it, and then we can open the account. And then you can use it, you not use it, you don't charge any fees or you're not required to have any funds in there. But you're talking like you have a project coming down the road. Um, 
you know, we deal with that stuff all the time where you have the cash come in and you're like, let's segregate it so we know where it's sitting and you can track the interest separately and be ready to go when that project starts. If you know how long that project's gonna last, we can help you kind of time investments even outside of the fund to say, okay, maybe it makes sense to pull a CD at a certain time limit at this guaranteed rate so you know how much your money you're gonna make while you're waiting for that project to last. We do a lot of client like uh, bond proceeds management where if you're building a highway or a school or something, you know exactly how long it's gonna take and you'll get like, all the bond money up front. We can help manage the arbitrage and track the reporting for the IRS and make sure that, well, not make sure, but try to offset all the costs that you would incur for borrowing it and you know, kind of retain those, those funds. Um, that's, you, well, one of my jobs is, I mean, obviously marketing the fund and being out here talking to all of you, but I am a Series 7 registered rep. I am a Series 50 municipal advisor. So our fiduciary duty is to you and your project. Um, so we can tell you whether it makes the most sense to even use inpaid at that point. You know, if you have a project that comes in, it might make more sense to be in a money market, you know, at your bank or in CDs at your local bank, or it's a combination of a few different things. We want to make sure you just, with each project, it would maximize, you know, what's in the best interest of you. But those are all other services, and <clears throat> I don't want to get too over into the weeds, but a lot of other services you get just by having access to inpaid. That bond proceeds management's on. We do a ton of cash flow analysis as well, so you probably have, you'll have history of what your balances look like as a as a city, and what are your highs, what are your lows. You know, obviously, what are funds coming in, when are they going out, and then historically, what is that low balance? Well, then it's just say, well, maybe you should be maximizing the return on those low balances too. Um, that's just all services that we do as as managing the fund. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just that's what that's why we're hired to run it is because we're required to do that for you. So I, go ahead. I got a couple questions. Mm -hmm. And I know the money market is not a sure thing. Now, what have you seen? And, and we've seen crashes before. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm a conservative man. I don't put this neck out any further than I want to chop it off. So let's, let's just use some hypothetical numbers. Let's say we get $500,000. Mm -hmm. And there's no guarantees that you know, if, if things go sour, we're just out of that money. Is that, how, how does that work? Right. So number one I gotta say is, inpaid technically is an investment. Could you lose money? Yes. Have we ever? No. Um, and let me go to that part of it too. You hit on a very key point. So being an investment, I mean, with public dollars or even with a bank, anything over $250,000 is technically FDIC insured, FDIC insured. So that's where you have to follow collateralizing those funds so that your dollar is safe. I should have started with this too. So we have to follow, as an investment advisor to the inpaid fund, we follow state statutes. And, and those are laid out, or what are investments that can back or collateralize that fund. So even if you're on your own, if you pull $1 million CD to bank, anything over 250 needs to be collateralized in some other way, whether it would be in this single bank pool collateral program, or you have treasuries or agencies or some type of collateral or a certificate that says, if something would happen, your money is still safe. So that's where we follow state laws to follow that. Um, I can give you a long answer to this because this is a very important question. Um, one, we use stress tests on the fund, the bulk of the fund, um, all the time. And through what happened over the last two years when rates went to zero, nobody lost any money. So there's proof in the pudding that you know things can go really, really bad, really south in a hurry. And the fund's back to 5.35% and no one's lost any money. But we do stress tests on the fund. So right now, there's a lot of stuff going on too. If the Fed raises something, I mean, we're kind of on a bubble right now. And so things could change quickly, but we think of, okay, so what if the Fed, instead of dropping at 25 basis points, what if they drop 150 basis points? What happens to the fund? What happens if they decided to increase what that borrowing rate is? So we're always saying, putting that stress on the fund to say, what would happen is the, you know, is it still a one-to-one -one net asset value of your dollar being in here backed by a dollar? Um, and then we look at what happens if a large amount of money came out of the fund? What if a large amount of money comes into the fund? Those are all scenarios that we're running all the time so we can kind of get an idea and the board sees all those stress tests. So as the fund, um, we're making sure that, you know, your dollar in there is always worth a dollar. So let's say we agree to put some money with your outfit and do, uh, are we going to be contact with somebody that's going to watch our money for us a little bit or we have to do it ourselves? I mean, do we have to 
monitored or sales? I mean, how, how does this how does this work with your company? Do you, I mean, let's say I use too much money, right? For five hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand, what a bank covers. Mm -hmm. and you guys are saying that you're going to go to follow the same standards as they do. It's not the same as a bank, no. But anything over that two fifty, there's Nebraska law that says how funds need to be collateralized, and that's going to be what those securities the back the entire fund. Whether Think of it more of like, it's just an online bank account, like a high yield savings account. So you just, you're just you just gonna look at what that balance is. I'm just explaining to you everything else that's going on. But can we get a scenes. report for your company saying how we're doing yeah. a month or six months or yearly or? Yeah, so it's a daily rate. So the day it's a daily rate and it's paid monthly. It, it earns money mm -hmm. daily, paid monthly. And just like a bank account, you log in, pull your statement. And it'll tell us up to date what the, what, <coughs> what's your, a graphic thing showing where we're headed. Well, well, we can't predict where we're headed, but oh, I mean, yeah, like from from last month to this month, we raise it lower or whatever. Oh yeah, is. yeah. So the thing that's different than be like a savings account it would be more. Um, our job is to make sure that it's a one to one net asset bit ratio, right? So your dollar in is backed by a dollar, and then our job is to use those dollars to make dividends <coughs> or make interest. So your dollar in there, like you put two hundred fifty thousand dollars in in bait. We can show your balance there, but at the end of the month, it's going to be a dividend. I mean, because you're a participant in the fund, that's what your that's what your interest is. So you'll you'll see, yeah, it just think of it looking at that statement. It's going to show your principal. It's going to show your interest. So I know you guys ain't doing this for nothing. So how do, we, do you pay a, a monthly fee to your service, or how do you do that? <coughs> Good question. No, we're the five point three five percent rate. That's net after cost to run the fund. So that that's what we get after. Or you guys yeah. pay on your stuff. So us as service providers, the board sets how much we are paid, and that's just everything that takes to run the fund is taken out, and then the 5.35 is net rate. So you won't, there's no, you won't see any fees. There's a cost to run it, obviously, but our job is to do that efficiently, but then still make it a high yielding fund, or else no one would use it. I mean, we can't pay ourselves more and then not pay enough for you, and then no one uses it. And there's no fund, so it has to be a competitive. So what's what's the? Uh, I mean, let's go back to two hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. All right. If for some reason we needed extra amount, do we? Is there a minimum that we have to leave in there, or we can take it off and zero start over if we have some more <coughs> out there? Yeah. So we're not we're not yes. locked to having that much money in all the time. No penalty. No. So like if, so basically you're using the two hundred fifty thousand. Buying what mutual funds? Is that what you're doing? So collateralized investments, um, according to state law, it's no, not mutual funds. Um, some money markets, which would be classified as mutual funds, but money markets are safer than that. Um, a lot of treasuries, U.S. treasuries and agencies, it's all on the debt side, right? So it's, debt is is safer than what equities are. So it's going to be like U.S. debt, treasuries, agencies. Um, bank CDs, we can only work with Nebraska banks, which is also in state law. So we work with Nebraska banks and essentially do bulk CDs with them, or SDA agreements with them. Um, there is a little bit of commercial paper, which would be a corporate obligation, but that's only a small portion of the fund, um, not near what's allowed in state statutes, just because we want it to be safer. Um, and then there's some like overnight repo. What that is, it's kind of like an overnight money market fund for banks where they need to borrow back and forth so they can meet their cash minimums every night. Um, all super safe investments. Nebraska's laws are way more conservative than any of the other states that we work in. So this normally just pays better than putting it in a CD? Well, it's a daily rate. Um, right now, this is, this, you're going to get a tricky, tricky answer to that. Right now, it is paying better because daily rate, because it's more in an inverted yield curve. So short-term rates are higher than what long-term rates are. So short-term like money market in pig fund is 5.35, whereas we're seeing like one-year CDs at like 5.15 or 4.95. And so I mean, that's essentially just... saying that the market's gonna come down a little bit, so banks are paying or CDs are paying a little bit less because they think that by the time that the fund is mature in a year, short-term rates will be lower. Um, so, yes and no, I guess <laughs> is the answer to that. Do we have any choice of the matter? I mean, I had some money and I had a whole sheet of for I could put. Now, who decides where we're gonna stick our money? Is that your company telling us the best place to put the money or 
how does that work? I mean, everybody has, should have a choice. I mean, they're talking to a city here, not just an individual. You know, how do you determine where the money gets divided and what's going to do our best use? Everyone gets the same rate. It's all, it's a bulk, right? So if there's, call it $500 million in there, it, the whole entire thing's collateralized together. So which, which, uh, no, you have to buy stock someplace. No stock, we can't buy stock. Okay. Yep. No. It's basically large issues of, of debt. So when the treasury issues debt, we'd be a part of that, or if it turns over, we'd be a part of that. It's, the whole point of the fund is that you get access to, like we can buy those larger blocks of securities at a cheaper rate than you would individually, and that's where you get that kind of economies of scale or the you know, chance at a better rate. Individually though, like we're not gonna place individual investment. That's not, that's not what we do. If, unless you wanted us to help broker like a CD, I mean, you can call us. We do fixed term rates all the time for clients where they'll say, hey, we got a CD mature, you know, 100,000 bucks or a million bucks. We want rates for one year. We work with our bank network. We can look at what it costs for a treasury or an agency and provide you that rate. If it's something you want to go with, we can place it for you. Or you can go to your local bank and just say, hey, I got rates here. Can you match this? And they say yes. Then we tell you to go with that, whatever one the highest rate was. But I wouldn't get too into the weeds of like, in, we're not like, we're not like your individual investment advisor. We're going to tell you like, here's exactly what your portfolio needs to look like. It's just a money market fund. I'm just telling you the safe way behind the scenes that we follow the laws and make sure that the entire fund's back and safe. You guys excited for finance class out here? God, I feel like I needed some finance jokes. I have a 10 year old and a seven year old, so I really don't need only jokes they were 10 year old and they're not politically correct right now, so <laughs> throw them out there. Any other questions? Well, we'll definitely talk about it, take into consideration. I don't know if we. They were so contempt on that. How do we. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it takes us. A resolution. Too. Yeah, the resolution is in front of you. And seriously, no pressure. I mean, the four really big holes. I'm not here to try to cap, like, capture your money, right? Sean Kelly reached out to me, <coughs> asked me questions, and just to tell me the services. And the fund's been around for 30 years. My job is just to make sure that I come to meetings and answer any of your questions. Like, we're not money hungry, right? We're not on your to get your cash. Um, if you want to use it, you have to have pass a resolution. We get audited on that stuff at the federal level. They make sure that before we open an account for anybody, we have everything in order. Um, so you can pass the resolution, we can open the account, whether you have money in there or don't. That's up to you. So we didn't close any doors by doing We're just opening a door with yeah. the potential to do $3 or $3 million for yeah. the sake of whatever happens to the yeah, and it wasn't created to cannibalize local bank relationships right. either. It's just another tool in your toolbox. Sometimes, which we saw a lot when bank product was, you know, when all rates were zero percent, banks didn't really want cash, and so people were looking place to park it. Sometimes you might have a project that comes in, you know, a natural disaster, so you get three, four million bucks. Where do you need to put that? That's what we do. We need to collateralize it or keep it safe. Um, so it's just a tool for you. Not, not, not trying to take all of your money away, right? We're just one, one other player in the sandbox. Talk about more about the resolution. Anything? Can you tell me how it works, like with the banks? And I know if you don't want to answer this question, it's perfectly fine, but. Um, the banks, they have to pay insurance to collateralize, or how does that work? Like our bank now, we have the money, in, we have money in there, and they pay extra because it's above $250,000. Mm -hmm. So how will that hurt our bank if we move the money into this account? I don't want to speak for your bank. Um, that's, I mean, I would just say that's kind of why we're separate. I mean, banks make money a lot. I mean, they make money in their own way. Like, this is kind of why the fund was created, right? It was just 30 years ago when they said, 
we want to know if we have access to how can we make more money and that's why they created a pool and they put public entities. That's where there's all these state laws about how you can keep it safe and how you can keep it liquid. Thanks, they operate differently, right? They're, these, they're for profits. I, I only understand you probably the same thing that you do about reading the news about FDIC, FDIC insurance going up because of the bank failures. Um, that's about all I can really, I can really say on that. It's not my wheelhouse. I'm the, I'm the other side of the house. Right, right. Sorry. No, that's okay. Thank you for yeah. your presentation. For, I think this is great. My only thought is I would like to talk to our bank more about it. I have talked to them once. And I would like to talk to them again before we make a decision. But, I mean, it sounds great otherwise. Mm -hmm. Well, we're educated now. Thank you very much More educated for that. than yeah, we so were. Educated. Mm -hmm. And others to talk to, and there's several other communities in the area, your county treasurer, we do, that's how you guys collect your, you receive your county taxes, is through us, it comes from inpate, we collect them for them, everything's HCH from boring to you, so she would be a great person if you have more questions about it, she'd love to answer them, so. So if we have some money in there for a little while, and then say we have zero for a year, or how, how would that work? That's up to you. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like when I was talking earlier about like the stress test, like we we plan for all that stuff of funds when they're gonna come in, when they're gonna go out. I mean, it's a really large fund. I mean, it's mostly to the point where if we have a, a super large city or some other entity that's gonna pull out like a hundred million dollars, we want to be aware of that because we'll make sure that the funds gonna be ready for it. But most of the time, you know, you're talking. About Dollars or less, and those are going in and out every day. And we just know that's going to happen. So we don't need to know the balance or anything. We're just act appropriately. Yeah. So are we going to be assigned a, I don't know, I'll just call them agents or somebody that we contact, or I mean, is there somebody that we can, is it you? It's me or Jake. So yeah, Jake is our right hand man. He'd be technically your portfolio advisor. Um, Lori from Knox County loves him. She actually sent, he's in our Naperville, Illinois office, and she actually sent him cookies the other day. He does so much for her, so um, you'll like Jake. A lot of investors, you know, they come and they tell you it's gonna be great, and then all of a sudden you'll call them and, well, they don't work here anymore, and they're gone, and you're gonna sit out by yourself. His <laughs> <laughs> name is Jake. Huh? It is, he sounds like Jake. Jake's been at PMA for, um, Actually, longer than I've been there every single day. Um, but also, he was out today, and so his emails are going to Tom, and Tom knows all the Nebraska clients too because they all fill in for each other. So, okay. Yeah. Well, Dad, let's talk about it. And yeah. Yeah. It was really good. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Love to be up here. Exactly how they are, even though it would be really nice to slow down traffic out there by the school. But the Department of Nebraska Department of Roads says this is the way it's going to be, and I don't know if we have another option. We have to put some more signs. signage, but it's not part of this, the state requirements, right? Street, street yeah, okay. Well, uh, it, 
uncomfortable when we're talking about street signs. If you want to, if no, you want to have, fine. I just no, that's that. fine. I don't know the number, location, if something we want to change, we definitely no, can talk about. That's not going to the state, though. If you're going to add more signs, street signs, you're going to want to stay out there. That's right. Questions about that? Okay. The next item of new Wait, business. This requires a paid ordinance. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> and I need a, um, it's ordinance number 2-12-24, and I'll need a motion to waive the three readings of it. So this is to change the speed limits, we're not changing No, we're not changing rates. anything, it's just every, we have to update these so often and it requires an ordinance to do it. And I'll read the ordinance to you if I get a, a motion that we're going to waive the three readings of it, and then I'll read it to you. I'll make a motion to waive the three readings of the ordinance. Motion has been made and seconded to waive the three reading of the ordinance. Height? Yes. Walvernet? Yes. Miller? Yes. <coughs> ordinance number 21224, an ordinance adopting and establishing a reduced speed zone on state highways within the incorporated area of the City of Crofton, Knox County, Nebraska, be it ordained by the Chairman and the City Council of the City of Crofton, Knox County, Nebraska. One. No person shall drive a vehicle on a highway at a speed greater than is reasonable and prudent under the conditions and having regard to the actual and potential hazards from existing. Any person shall drive at a safe and appropriate speed when approaching and crossing an intersection or railroad grade crossing, when approaching and going around a curve, when approaching a hill crest, when traveling upon any narrow or winding roadway, and when special hazards exist with respect to pedestrians or other traffic or by reason of weather or highway conditions. Two, except when a special hazard exists that requires lower speeds for compliance with subsection one of this ordinance, no person shall drive a vehicle on the state highway north 12 within the corporate limits of the city from the west corporate limits 530 feet west of the junction within 121 to the east corporate limits east 2nd street in excess of 35 miles per hour no person shall drive a vehicle on the state highway in 121 within the corporate limits of the city from the junction within 12 to the north corporate corporate limits at Iowa Street in excess of 55 miles per hour. Three, the maximum speed limit set forth in this section may be altered as set forth in section 39-663 or section 39-666 Nebraska Revised Statutes Reissue 1943. Four, the Department of Transportation and local authorities may erect and maintain suitable signs along highways under their respective jurisdictions in such number and at such locations as they shall deem necessary to give adequate notice of the speed limit upon such highways. Five, for purpose of this ordinance, vehicles shall mean every device in, upon, or by which any person or property is or may be transported or drawn upon a highway, excepting devices moved by human power or used exclusively upon stationary rails or tracks. Six, any person violating any provision of the several articles of this ordinance for which penalty is not otherwise provided for under the laws of the state of Nebraska or the prior ordinances of the city of Crompton shall be deemed guilty of a misdemeanor and upon conviction thereof shall be fined in any sum not exceeding $100. Seven, all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith are hereby repealed. Eight, this ordinance shall be enforced and take effect from and after its passage, approval, and publication. Passed and approved this 12th day of February, 2024. Motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the ordinance. Right, sir. <coughs> motion made and second. Jason? Yes. Miller? Yes. Heights? Yes. Okay, next item of business is the swimming pool update and the projection for the summer. Uh, the projection for the summer is we will be living, as far as I know, with our existing pool. There's no way that we're, the resources they are that we're going to be able to rip out the pool this summer and have it ready by next year. I don't think that that's, that funding is available to do that from what we see. 
Yeah, they're just waiting on us. Yeah. And, but, and First, we need to make a motion or we need to enter into a new contract with them because our contract with JO has expired. And so, Spe specifically for the board or for the city in general? We, I don't city, we have, we have JO. Right, we, I think we, we yeah. do. Okay. No. So, it's a city council review and approve entering into agreement with JDO. I'm not sure if that's for the pool or the whole. But I can find out tomorrow. Andrew's great about replying to Andrew is also a gentleman that estimated that pool house at $600,000. Um, I don't, he said the material cost for the bathhouse alone will likely be over $600,000. That seems like a lot for a pool house. It does. But I think we can either tell him our budget for the pool house, and then he will look with that, or we can say, happen to plans for the audience. So that was that's up to us. Yeah, they're just really on us. Sure. Um, we do need to decide whether we I just needed to know if we, uh, that's a regular permit we get every year. Yes. I just needed to know if I was going to get it again or if the pool was going to be closed. So I will send that in. It's forty dollars. We get that yearly. Yeah. Everybody, everybody who owns a pool has to have this. No, no. I just needed to know if we were. Going to so are we going to have? to get a direction about whether the contract will include that house or just be the pool only. Which would it be better if I told them our budget for the back house? Yeah. Which is what is our actual sustainable budget for the I ask them what kind of <coughs> You can, you can ask. I mean, the door. That's fair to ask, right? The doll plans it if you can for something for a hundred thousand dollar bath house. Because the, the new pool comes with the new mechanical parts are there. We just need the closure of the bath house. Does all the mechanical parts of the Correct. Have a closer there. 
So what they charge us for our contract when we read it, the price depends on whether the bat house is included in there. Their design part of the house. So do we want them to design a bat house for us, knowing that the estimated cost they have is six hundred thousand. Unless we ask them for a lower number. But they can they can design it, but we're not saying we're gonna have a gold. But we're going to pay him to design it. Well, I but that's what we want to do. You've got to have something for a stage where I've got to have a bathhouse. You're not going to put curtains up and call it a bathhouse. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mill would like to propose to them that if we'll let you design this if you can design it with some kind of budget constraint of some limit that we can afford to do it. Is that right? So, so what's that number? What's the logic of the design of a bathhouse? The other thing is if we say, Let's have a one hundred thousand dollar budget. I don't know, Larry. It sounds like maybe you talk to people in the community that are willing to volunteer or make right. donations. Then maybe that amount would go down to the community. We have to know the total figure if we're going to figure out how much volunteer is going to be. Are you going to call us and be a volunteer also? We don't know what hand is, so they can step back. And they want to see that we have the money to cover whatever we're Okay, the next item of new business is the survey for, of the community. And uh, I believe that I have, we have, a survey at our house. It's a fairly simple thing. I don't know if everybody got it in town. Yeah, everybody has a survey. And it's simple just say uh, above or below. I don't know what percentage of people did or what. We had, and I don't know exactly how long. We went through this process where a certain percentage of people in town, <coughs> all um, tied up in legalities and, and crosses T 
T's and dot and I's, stuff like that. This was supposed to happen a long time ago. As you know, it came out on paper there was going to be a survey. Nobody got surveyed because they didn't know what percentage of town had to get a survey. And we couldn't get the answers to figure out. So we did that in vain, right? And so now, now there are surveys out there. Where it's from N E N N E D or something? Northeast Nebraska Economic Development District. N E N E D D. Right, but that's what it is. And yeah, so I got mine in the And I don't know, I don't know what percentage are, but the goal hopefully is that um, before through the survey is we have, and, and the facts are the facts are one, the people that they surveyed had too many people above the threshold, and so now we're resurveying, hoping to get a better data analysis. So that potentially we have enough people below that, so that that makes us infinitely um, available for more grants and, and low, low interest loans. But I, we're not falsifying documentation, we're just pooling a different group of people, and I think it's random, but we're just going to see if we can make something So happen. not everybody in town is getting I don't it. think that everybody in town is getting it. But everybody that gets the survey needs to Absolutely. return it. Absolutely needs to return it. But, yeah, but Bob and Aaron, Jamie, some people ask me, is this survey going to be with this new school? And they're getting, they're getting confused thinking that the survey is for the, the, the election coming up on March 12th, I think. There's no connection. No connection. It's, it's for a grant for our city, right? These are supposed to be equivalent to what we can get for grants. Yeah, it makes us eligible. In order to apply for certain grants, you have to have a certain level of income above or below that magical number. Is, is, uh, let's say we had 600 people in Crawford, which we probably need. Out of that 600, is it 20% that get it? Is there a percentage that they put out or we don't know that? We don't know what percentage. Uh, what I percentage? don't even think they know for sure what percentage they send out. It's, it looks I think they're all set out though. They're not, they're as not far as I know, the people that are going to get a survey have a survey and they need to turn it so back. We need, we need to urge people to do it because yes. that'll reflect on the grants that we can get for our, right. our city across it. Great. Yep. So a lot it's of people not for any grant in particular. No. Nope. It's just for nope. any just grant. For, right. All Overall grants. grants that we could get. Yep. It's kind of like, I guess this might be, for example, it's free or reduced lunches at school. I mean, the more people that you have qualified for free or reduced lunches at school makes your school in a better situation financially. And so this gives us more opportunities. So please, please fill it out. Um, wherever you're at, above or below, it doesn't make a I mean, it's hopefully, you know, it's confidential, you know, like nobody else will see it and you can fill it out and send it back in, but it does have merit. It really does have merit for our city. So. And I guess the bottom line is if everybody's above, then, then we have a lot of resources and we don't need to worry about writing grants right now. Okay. Okay, any other questions about that? Yep. I'm so confused on how you determine who gets that and how it's I'm assuming above the threshold is people that make more and don't qualify for a grant. So how how is that? How how do they determine that? Uh, it's it's a, not really accurate then. It's a it's an agency that does this. We asked them to do this for us. They dealt with the government, the state of Nebraska, to figure out what the percentage was, and that initial thing never happened. We couldn't get a response for them. And and, and Mrs. Potts can help me. Nancy. Nancy Potts worked diligently with them, and then they finally said, "Well, we don't know, so we can't send out the surveys because we don't have a clue." <laughs> well, evidently, they, now they have a clue. They didn't clue me on what that percentage is. I don't know. They never said to us that as a city, as a, what did you send to you? Mm -hmm. That says what percentage? I have no idea. They did not say, "Hey, Bob Evans, circle the 17 places or 27 or 107 places that you want to send to." It's just a random thing that they pulled out, and I don't have any idea how what we can do to control that. My Hope is that we get a lot below, <laughs> but I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know how they determine that. And Nancy's asked them multiple times, and, and Jamie and I have seen the email where she's just frustrated and beyond belief. And Irma's part of the same email group that's asking why, why, what are we going to do? And initially it was like 13 percent, or 37 percent, or something like that. But who picks those? A machine randomly pulls those out and sends them. So I, I wish they had 
a better way to do it. There has got to be a better way to do it. But. And I think this kind of a survey is supposed to be done periodically. Right. We haven't done one for many, well, many years. Like It was like 10 times longer than it should have been done. I don't know if we are supposed to initiate that or what, but it's something that it seemed like was overdue. And yeah, Nancy's been working to get this. And if we, you know, we may qualify for some grants and not others. So this company writes the grants? No, they just determine our level. That's what right we need some grants. <coughs> That's where we're going to next. That's our next topic. Gotcha. So is there any more question about the community service, uh, community survey? If not, we'll move on to a bright spot in this process. There's a lot of bright spots. But anyway, um, possible hiring of a grant writer. Uh, economic development leaders, Michael and Aaron, Phillips, myself, and Mr. Pites attended a meeting of the Knox County Economic Development Community. And uh, we, we joined as a city. We're part of the economic development for Knox County. They recently hired five rule planning. Um, five rule planning is that, they are that people. They're that group of people. That's what they do is help cities get resources. That's what they're for. And it started out as a lady that was working for the state of Nebraska, and she was building these massive portfolios for towns and, and was getting paid or whatever, and she handed the portfolio over to the city and then she turned and walked away, and they had this information that she compiled. And she was so, so distraught by all that because this was her life and that's the town's you know, heartbeat right there, so she decided to, to break away from the state of Nebraska and start her own company. She does exactly the same thing she does, does all the statistical data, data analysis of a town, Michael, correct me when I'm wrong. <laughs> and, then, and then she takes that and she gives this to you. And then, of course, obviously, then she turns around and finds matching grants and resources to go right with it. And they're going to be here. That company, her name is Bobby, and the, uh, Lowell is her associate. And they've been doing economic development for many, many, many years. Knox County, through your supervisors, hired them for a six-month trial uh, basis with no additional costs to our city. Right? And I asked her, I asked Bobby, the owner of the company, I said, can we, for this, because we got to have grants, right? And I don't, you know, I, I'm at my wit's end about it. She says, no, you can't pay us one extra cent. We've got six months to prove ourselves to Knox County. We're going to make that work. And we're going to prove that, obviously, we're worth our weight and whatever they're getting paid. And that they're going to, the Knox County supervisors won't have a choice but to keep us on. And then we'll be able to part of it. They're coming here Monday, a week from today because they need to know our community better. And so there two of them are coming here and Larry's gonna drive them around. We're gonna feed them up here at the, and it's on Monday, fortunately we don't have Quibos Recreation. Uh, but so Erin has agreed to feed them up here at the Second Street, the shop on Second, she's gonna feed them up there. And then we're gonna have a, a discussion about three primary things, about day, start, excuse me, child care, housing, and LB840 and where we're going and what we have for resources available. And they want to, question us about those things, and then we're going to take them, and they want to see, they want to know what the heartbeat, what Crofton looks like, and Larry's going to throw them in a van and drive them around for a while, and then they're going to take off at 3 o'clock and go to Wausau and do the same thing. So I, I think, myself personally, and I don't know, Michael was there, I, I, I think it was a real deal. But it'll be an asset for the area. You know, it's one of those things where, through the county, it's going to be limited. Some stuff that they can't can't do for us, but they need one here. Yeah. Let them prove themselves and go from there. Yeah, I just thought it was a huge step in the right direction with investment. When we were part of the Knox County Economic Development, we were <coughs> speed, and so we are contributing a little bit, but nothing additional that we wouldn't already do. And so but they're going to go to every one of the towns: Wausau, Creighton, Bloomfield, Niagara, Verdigree. They're going to look at each town over, and they're going to they're going to help each town individually instead of just putting us in a big pool. They're going to come across, and they're going to see exactly what we need and what we expect. And it goes to another town, and they're going to do the same thing. So it's a good deal, good deal that we get a one-to-one -one basis on. Yep. It would be good to have that survey back before they came, you know, because you are talking to them about what people want. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and, you, and we went to the meeting, and, and the lady pointed out to us clearly. She said, what do you need? And everybody, she said, don't say housing. Don't say child care, because everybody knows that you need child care. But she said, here's the fundamental thing. Why, why do you need child care? Why, why, what's different? What's different about child care now than it was 10 years ago? What's making that different? And what's different about housing? What's making it different? Everybody can want housing, everybody can want child care, but what is the root cause for those things being the deficits in our community? And I told her, you know, not to insult anybody, but we have three daycare providers, more than that, sorry, but we have three of them that are all 65 years old, that, that would rather be doing something else at this point in time in their life, but they love children and they don't want to give it up, right? So she had real data there that she can say, oh, Crofton's on a destructive path here with their primary daycare people being 65 years old and older and each one of them averaging nine people. So we have real information to help her. Now, what we can do about that and what she can put that into resources for us, I don't know, but I'm willing to, to do whatever I can to help them out so they can help us out. And they have grant writers? They are grant writers. Okay. They are. They're planning for our city through grants, yes. What was her name again? Her name? Yeah. Five rule. Five rule planning. No, the lady's name. Bobby. Bob. Don't remember. Don't but if you go five rule planning, it's on the, on the website. Poof, it's there. It's Thank there. You. All about her historical. And she came in boots and jeans, so yay. Yeah, yeah, she's fit real good. Really good. Yeah. Anything else? I'm super excited about it. I, I just. I don't want to be overly excited like Michael. I, I want to be optimistic, but you know, cautious because you know we have a lot of work to do. But we're making major strides in the right direction, and I believe this is a good step in the right direction. So they will they get like find you grants to help with that pool and stuff like yep. that. Yep. Yep. And that's through the government. Yep. And and the way they only can do they really can do that, Michael, is by gathering information for us. Mm -hmm. You know, because every town's different. Although we need housing and child care, right? But our needs are different than everybody else's are, and that's why they want to come here and find out why Crofton is different and what, what they can do with our specific needs grant-wise to help us out. Mm -hmm. And I did invite Michael, Aaron, <coughs> Council, Donna, um, Chantel, of course, and uh, uh, somebody from the child care, I think Rebecca from child care, so those are authorities and we have, and I know child care is working to form a, a I'll get this up, a 3014 CBK, whatever it is, so they can be a nonprofit organization on themselves. I know they're working through the documentation of doing it. 3 cb 501. One of those numbers like that. So, anyway, <laughs> they're working through that process, and so I wanted Rebecca to be there so she can obviously represent that group, and hopefully, she can be a part of that. Anything else? Questions? If not, we'll move on to the next item, which is auto pay for the bank for <coughs> customer payments of utilities provided by the city. Okay.
instead of writing a check. Our next generation, some of them don't even have checks. And I, I think that would be, I think it's something we could at least try. And um, it would definitely reduce the amount of time spent in the office doing up deposits and processing. It would save Don a lot of time. We can try it, um, see how it works. Work. Is there a charge to the consumer for that? There's not. No, it's $240 annual fee with the bank. So you can send just the, the bill email with? You don't have to get it in the mail? Right. When did you start offering that? I didn't know that. <laughs> Sometimes it works. Because <laughs> oh, I could, yeah, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Donna, Donna can even be emailed. Yeah, Donna can set that up for you. Right. Um, it, it, it works most of the time. I think we've had a lot of people asking, especially people coming to town, they're wanting to know if they can set something like this up. You know, paying cash or check is is kind of a historical way of doing things in this next generation. But I guess we don't need a resolution to it. We're already set up the bank. The bank has our information because we are doing automatic deposit for the payroll. So we did auto debit for the accounts, for the water bills. It would, we don't need a resolution, we just need permission to do that. It would come out on the 5th. If the 5th lands on a holiday or a Saturday or Sunday, it would come out the following bank, banking day. So it would not surprise anybody. So if it falls on a Saturday, they wouldn't surprise you and you wouldn't be done on a Friday, it'd be done on the following Monday. We just need permission from the council to be able to do that and spend that two hundred forty dollars this year to start doing that. And we would put up the flyer and a form in all the billing accounts, and people could sign up for it if they want to wait and sign up for it later. They can do that too, but it would be an option, something to try. It sounds like it would pay for itself yeah. in one month. Uh, the product, yeah, like the amount of time you guys. <laughs> Any questions of Chantel? Uh, if not, thank you very much. We appreciate it. I think it's entirely up to you. Thank you. Please make a motion to give her permission. I'll second. Motion is made by second. Motion is made by Miller? Yes. Pike? Yes. Walker? Yes. All right. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, okay, so the next item is, uh, in my agenda, if I turn over the next page, is a possible wiring uh, and a heater for the auditorium kitchen. <laughs> in light of the circumstances that evolve, with no fault of anyone in particular, just, you know, that's where life is when things happen. <clears throat> we obviously awarded the golden key to our city to Wanda for saving our, our building. Um, there is a heater out there that we can put up in the corner because there's there's no heat in there. And it, well, even like when we have council meetings and it's 60 degrees, 70 degrees out here, it's <coughs> ice, ice cold in there. And Dustin can kind of test the fact that how many, to keep it, you gotta keep the cabin doors to keep the pipes from yeah. open from freezing and it, yeah. it's a not a good situation. Yeah. And so we could get a heater and hang it up in the corner, which we have one available um, for reduced price. And then uh, we could get bids on getting it wired in there with the thermostat and we could take care of that situation. The heater cost is about $150 for a wall hanging heater. Um, and I don't, I, have, I don't have estimates yet. That. That's entirely up to you if you want to go forward with this or, or not. Um, whatever I'll, you want to I'll do. I'll make it. a motion to uh, put the wiring and get a heater for the auditorium kitchen. So we'll take so bids we'll, on it and we'll take we'll it. We'll get a motion to A motion to take bids on it or just go ahead and do it? I'll get bids on it. That's okay. No second. Motion is made and I'll second it. Right? Yes. Bobernick? Yes. And no. Yes. Okay. First item old business is a water diversion in Omaha Street. So go ahead. All right. Uh, the last meeting, we, Mr. Weiser came and showed us a diagram of property on Omaha Street and how they were going to divert that. 
down past the creek down there by, uh, you know, end up in uh, South Park and end up down there past Leon Wakeley's and into that. But, uh, I talked to Mr. Carlson and he was at the meeting and I talked to him after the meeting and he showed me, if you know where his property is, it's there's a red gate right to the easiest place. He said if we took a patrol and a payloader and just hollowed out a spot of ground, you know, there's a building sitting out there. If you went to the east of that, hollow that out because that's where all the water pools and drain it into that uh, reservoir tank that the, the smokehouse has. He said he'd be very happy with that. And that water's coming off of Omaha Street and those apartments, all that water ends up down there anyway. But if it pools right there by his business and that red gate to the east of his seat that we went in there. And I talked to Dustin and I think we can just do it ourselves. You know, and maybe have a surveyor kind of check it out to make sure we got a slope to that resident tank there, that, that hole in there, where those willow trees are next to there. And there's enough water from way up by Bronze Swing, so it'll take it all. And they made it to make it all work. So Mr. Carlson said he'd be very happy if you hollowed out that spot down there by the corner and call it good. So, so the existing homeowners existing homes on Omaha Street get the benefit of not having water in their basement? Well, I'm not saying that. <laughs> it's a little well, area, but it's going to get right. rid of a lot of water. Right. I'm not saying that we're going to stop all the water in Omaha Street. Right. But it's going to help dramatically. It'll help. Yeah, you know, we had a big rain here last year, year before. And it flooded everything in my backyard <coughs> across the street. And this is the water can go out someplace without a clock. Okay. I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to have water in the basement. That's not that's going to happen. I have no control over that. Can't tile. It's a, the water can get to the the culvert, right? Yes. Now, and, it's, and that's what we wanted to, that's where we wanted to be. It goes on Carl's sense and it floods the whole thing and it pools up down. You see it back in his place, he's got, he used to keep explosives in that cement building back there. And it starts from there, it goes and it floods that whole area down there. And he wanted to get the water out of there, so that's why we're going to dig a, a valley in there to get it moving away. And Doc was, Doc was good with the surface waterway, you know, because it's going to take 70% of his pasture out there is going to be dry now. 20 or 30% might be affected by the <coughs> by the swale we're going to put in there, but he was happy with he getting said, there. He said it would get away. Right. So, I think Dustin and Mr. Shoemaker with their patrol and his payroll, I think we can do it ourselves. I think Dennis and, and Dustin's expertise on those machines, I think we can make it work. Okay. We need a motion for that. I can do that. Okay. So we have a motion. I'll motion to uh, fix up Mr. Carlson's corner there for the drainage of Motion has been made in the second. Walberty? Yes. Miller? Yes. And Pines? Yes. Okay, the next item of business is a recycling box. And do we have any further votes uh, on there or whatever? Is this, uh, nope. Um, I did have someone contact me about six years ago. And I think they said We can definitely continue to look into it and see if there are some other options and then we can talk about it again next week. Maybe if it was just cardboard versus all recyclables, right. I don't know if that would be more marketable where maybe we could sell the cardboard or they would take it and not charge us. Something like that might be an option. The results of the survey were overwhelming that the citizens of Copper don't want to pay an extra dollar to keep that recycled. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so we'll check in that out. Make an effort to check in to see if there's a way to recycle that cardboard. Okay, um, committee reports. Finding and zoning was there a meeting there the other night. Mm. Is he here? No. Finding and zoning. Okay. Uh, economic zoning. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, Donald wasn't able to be there, so uh, I'll speak. There were uh, a couple comments about the area around the elevator and CHS's property regarding the benefit of it. Redistrict into industrial rather than commercial, and that's being considered strongly. I uh, appreciated any input from others uh, about tax concerns as well as uh, uh, any other concerns that were really addressed. That, that was the primary concern, and uh, that's been taken under advisement. We'll continue to work with that. I uh, really appreciate the cooperation. Michael, do you have anything you'd like to add on behalf of the economic development? Me? I think we're just going <laughs> to wait until after we meet with them next Monday and then try to get the committee together on the meeting and proceed from there. All right. That should give us a little bit more guidance with which direction to take economic development. And we did, uh, I think we overwhelmed Knox County there. We were, I think we were the only town in Knox County that brought four representatives that were concerned and vested in, in moving forward in the process. And so they're happy with us and our commitment we have. And I applaud Michael and Aaron for taking the time and effort to, to show up down there and speaks volume to their equipment to uh, commitment to move forward. So thank you very much, Michael. <coughs> okay, moving on to administrative reports. We have uh, Don. Uh, well, good news is I got you all into the Cornhusker for the conference. I moved you out of uh, the courtyard area into that. They uh, had cancellations, so everybody got a room there, so you're good to go there. Um, the sales tax will be taking place um, April 1st. Um, we just let people know that it is so that they start fixing their cash registers and be prepared for the half cent. Um, if the state takes care of everything, we just kind of let people know and remind them. Um, I did uh, have keys made for the council <coughs> because I'd like you to start picking up your packets and I give you keys for the outside door. They'll be inside in the vestibule. You won't have keys to come into the office, but just in there. And then you can pick them up at your leisure when you get time to, so that I'm not going up and down everybody's steps and sidewalks and stuff. So. Um, also, uh, we have one bid that's come in so far for the property. Uh, it's a sealed bid, and we will be opening them on uh, the next meeting, which I believe is the uh, 12th of uh, March. So you still have time to get in bids if you're going to bid um, any of the properties. Also, I got a letter from uh, Cedar Knox. They are no longer going to charge us rent on our light poles. We'll still pay for light, of course, but they're not because they're not going to do wooden poles anymore. They're all the poles that they place now are going to be metal. If you want a decorative metal pole, you're going to have to pay for it. And if you want special lights, you'll have to pay for that too. But we are going to save a little bit of money, and Chantel and I won't know what until we see the bills, but we are not going to pay light on, or rent on the poles anymore. So. Uh, pretty much that's it. Things are going on. I actually was able, uh, Dustin was able to read the meters this, this month, so the meter readings are on the bills, and I actually, I got them all in today, be printing them tomorrow <coughs> and getting them out hopefully before the week is over. So, uh, and I did want to tell you, I did send you information on this um, EPIC. Uh, the, the, the tax that they're thinking about doing away with. And it's just for your information, it actually came from a very established uh, uh, clerk, city clerk, who has been a uh, clerk for over 30 years. And she just wanted the, the information out. She doesn't have a, a preference or uh, she just wanted you guys to have it. You should be aware of it. So I sent that all to you and you can get online. Anybody else who's interested, it's ne what Nebraska's thinking about doing and changing uh, the taxes here. 
property taxes and some other things and you can go online and find it. it's called epic and, and you can just get it under nebraska.gov if you're interested in reading what it is and other than that i think that's it so. uh, thank you very much dustin anything for the good uh, god just one thing uh down in the area of east second and omaha street which would be like up by kurt steppens diana allen's uh, we're having a lot of sewer issues there because uh, some years past, the, however, the sewer was routed. Uh, it wasn't done by the city, but we need to figure something out in order to get it straightened out so that we know <laughs> who's is who's and what's what. Because Alex and I have been spending a lot of time up there unclogging things lately. Um, I'm still trying to come up with options, I guess, as far as what we should do there, but um, just so you guys know, I guess that's going to be coming up. So how big is that, the city sewer line, Diana, or what is that? Well, the, the line coming up the alley right now, I believe, is only four inches. So that's all? Yes. What is a normal city sewer line that everybody connects to? What's that? Typically ten? six to eight, not eight, right? So. So is there, is there possibilities that we could connect where it goes from our city down to a four inch, we can put a bigger tube in there and connect these other people? Well, that's what I'd like to do. And tie each one on individually instead of having them all so, so right how many, in So how many feet roughly do you think that we'd have to put our um, extending of our city sewer line? Right now it extends up probably a half a block. I'd like to go a little farther than that, I guess. Feet wise, I guess I'm not sure how long it is. Are we going across, we have to go across the city, some uh, residential property there? To put that in there to hook well, everybody up? It's, it's, I guess, considered alley right now where it's at. Saturday. Saturday. So, we are probably going to have to tear a little ways into That's some people's right. yards, but it's got way more to fix it right. This is out on the street. So it's, it's doable to extend the city pipe so we can get it right. So, you know that, I'll, I'll Larry, do you know that where, where we're talking about down there? Yeah. Yes. Is there, you know, what? I'm just asking Alex, you're an expert at this too. So what if you add on to a, a city line? How how would you say how wide? How that diameter it works? Thirty six. Can do they make a pipe that can connect that, Alex? That connect to the sewer and make it just enough so we don't have that problem again to go to a four inch. It's all four inch. Is that? It's, it's all right four inch pipe. Right. right now it's all four inch. It is. Yes. But are they connected all? This way, or they got to make some line and everybody's going into it. Um, right now, all of it is four inch. So there's really no main there. No, there's no main there. But could we get that pipe bigger so we could have enough room for all those? We're talking about three families that are coming in there, right? Right. Right in that corner down there. Yeah. Would they join in all one central location or just all over right? Uh, they they pretty well all meet in one okay. in one area. So we just need to get a bigger main at that point. Need, yes. <coughs> That's what I would say. Right. Like I said, I'm still trying to come up with what's the best okay. option. But when, when I do, I guess it'll all right. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Any other questions of Dustin? <laughs> if not, we have a, a new uh, City code enforcer David Benak is here with us and I'll share some information. Uh, I've been spending some time in the office trying to learn the codes with a lot of the work. <clears throat> I'm sure everybody's familiar with the house on Main Street. It's very important on last year. <clears throat> I, the problem with that one is the owner is dead as is deceased. And the daughter's been paying the taxes on it for years. And she said that she's uh, with the, working with an attorney trying to get ownership of the house. And when she does that, she's going to sell the property. 
I told her by spring she has to do something with it. That's the deadline. Either that or we would do something. And, and there's another one on, uh, on uh, no. Highway 12. Highway 12. Hi. And Third Street. Yes. And very dilapidated. I talked to the owner today. Um, he wasn't real cooperative. But I told him I would give him the end of March to come up with a plan how he was going to fix the problem. And I just don't think he's going to do anything with it. And I was in the office the other day and we had a complaint on come in on the website of garbage blowing out of the neighbor's property. So I immediately contacted the person and they took care of the problem, and I contacted the plant today, and they were very happy that it was taken care of so fast. And we have a problem with the dog in this town. We've had several, several complaints on it. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to pick it up. And I don't know what to do with the dog to pick it up. We used to have a kennel up by the city yard. Do we have a kennel? Well, in the middle area, we had when Kreppel was on our policeman. She had a kennel up by the, the city yard or someplace. Let's go. Have you notified the owner? Yes, we sent, sent a letter out Thursday to the owner, but she's been contacted several times before about the same job. I think I will keep track of how many people when you contact her. I've got it. I've got it up there on the contact <coughs> and how she was contacted. And I know it's going to be, the dog's going to be running loose again, it's going to be, and I know she's been contacted several, several times. Is there a number of dogs that can be in the household? And she's got just one dog. I put the plug. Yes, one there is a limit on how many dogs. Yeah, you can have three, I believe. Three in the house. Yeah. Can you take the dog to the society? I don't know. I'm just wondering what I'm going to do with this dog once I pick it up. I know it's going to happen. You take it home and put it in the garage and feed it? No. How many dogs do you have? No. Do you have three? I think the one works before with the veterinary is going to go. Because we picked up a better dog that was there that was the runaway. And uh, he had it. That's what we ended up being. And so that after a certain point, I managed. Ron Hill, they just had a dog show up on the street, and they took it. Yeah. For the veterinary department. Can we take mm -hmm. you to the vet for a problem? Neither one of our vets, I don't think. Jeremy doesn't want small animals. That's hard. What about that? Yeah. 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 The one by Cookies? They mess with small animals. They don't want them. What? The one Lambert's doesn't want. I can't, I have no idea how we might be the car. Ron, Ron took, the, took a picture of the dog there. She took the picture up and she didn't want the dog. Uh, yeah. So uh, you can call Ron down to the right. That's the way I understood. She doesn't really have a place for this. Okay, my, <coughs> my goal with this job is to work with the people, period. Not to write tickets and not take them to court. And any way the city can help them. And I hope that you agree with me. And I, I'm too, I know, the court, code book is probably antiquated. I mean, you're a professional, so I trust your judgment on there. If there's things in there you'd like us to reconsider, modify, or just to meet things as should be in relationship to they are, please don't hesitate to let us know. Because if there are codes that are, codes that are you can't enforce, they're, they're worthless. Mm -hmm. So if there's some things in there we could modify to make your job easier and better for you to do, then please let us know. So All right. we can help you out. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for doing that job, David. I have a question. Yep. Is he going to take care of all the junk cars, too? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll make you a list. <laughs> <laughs> I was up to 113. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need a bigger tow lot. <laughs> Michael got room for all those. I just kind of stumbled upon it and then I did look into it in the paper, but as 
far as the general public knowing as far as what's going to be enforced, I mean, I just heard something about three dogs in the house, and I would have never known there was a limit, not that we have a dog, but I mean, I'm sure there's several people that have more than that in their home, but we never know that that's against the city ordinance. Okay. Is there somewhere where people can look at the city ordinance and know so that, you know, before they get a slap on the hand or enforcer coming knocking on their door that, oh, I didn't realize that was... I do not know if our codes ordinance. are listed on our city website or not. Mm -hmm. They're, They're not. not. But I do have, I've been putting things on the web page for people to look and right at the top of it, it says that your every dog needs to have a license by January. So if they come in and try to get four or five of them, I'll be able to tell them that they can only have three dogs in the city. But uh, other, you know, some people just need to call and find out if how many they can have. And there's a finders of the ordinances in the city office. Always available to look through. And a table and chair so you can sit down and read. <laughs> a whole binder. But it would be nice to get them electronic on the yeah. post on our website now. Well, it's different ideas of yeah. what is suitable and what's not. Yeah. What if it has puppies? <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's an issue, obviously. Yeah. But that's only a temporary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for Mr. Bernard? Okay. <coughs> we'll move on to. Oh, yeah. I'm there. That's me. Bob Evans. <coughs> I, I ran across something with the help of, um, there's a magic, mystical, you know, of course, obviously you've all seen it on Facebook where it's, it's, it's now, uh, the season is open for potholes, right? And there's people that fish in potholes and there's this stuff on Facebook, and, you know, pothole golf or whatever happened to be the case. But on the serious side of that, we, there's a, a trailer that we can rent that is a pothole fixing machine. It, it has a gravity feed where you get three eighths inch crushed red rock. It, it applies, this trailer has a, a liquid container, which we already have the liquid oil in a barrel. We could, a big barrel, right? Yeah, yeah, a big barrel of that stuff. We can apply the liquid oil and put the, the red rock in there and, and, and then seal it with some more of this magical stuff. And you pull this trailer. Um, it's kind of expensive, but we can rent it. We can rent the trailer. And if we rent it for, I don't know, a month or whatever we need to do, we can do with extra help, which we'll have to get, we can we could do the majority of the potholes in town. I don't know when the perfect day is because, you know, if we rent it today, we might have a blizzard and never get to do it. Um, you know, but anyway, it's an option for not very much money. Well, in comparison to the full cost machine, we can rent this. We, we can get the Red Rockets really available. It can be delivered here relatively inexpensively, and we already have the oil and we need a little extra manpower because Dustin already has enough to do, but we could run this machine and fill in potholes and hopefully in the rented time that we have a month, we could do the majority, if not all the town. And the testing of it is that um, when we asked the company that has this rental, they did it with this specific machine on the interstate on blacktop and it lasted better than the rest of the blacktop that was there. So, it's, it's a pretty good passion. It's a pretty good fill and, and operation. There, there's a heater, and I just don't want to, there's a heater on this machine, and if you can show a little picture of it, there. It's, it's a heater on there that heats up the oil combined with the rock, and you got to blow out the hole first with a compressor, and I think Jerry Stephan's got a big enough one to blow all the residue out of the hole. And one guy's holding the lawn, and the other guy's driving the truck, and one, you know, and you just spray it in that hole and it powers it in there. And the traffic that we have will pack this stuff down. And like Bob said, this guy did it on Interstate 80. They're in Lincoln, they're all over. He's got the, he's got the, the thing that we're looking for to fill our potholes. And we can go down the street and do all of them. It's, it's a wand that just go out and you just put it out there and it drops it right into the hole. So, I mean, I, I, I'm real positive it. I ran across it, showed it to Bob. Uh, we don't know what the cost of uh, three eighths inch crushed rock is. We got the oil and the rental of the machine for a month. And I think if we had four guys, I think we could do 90% of our town in one month. Be done. And if we have more problems, we can probably rent it again and do it that way. That beats the heck out of dumping a bag down there and trying to pack it in there. This one works better. 
which you know, obviously, we I don't remember how many bags, Dustin, that we bought, purchased, or whatever, for pothole mix. I mean, just fill in the hole and pack it down or whatever, but we did extensive amounts of that. I know it doesn't look like it right now, but we put a lot of those bags out there, and we have two pallets of those bags. Now, that we're doing, we'll do everything humanly possible to, to get those taken care of, especially, you know, ones at intersections where it's dangerous and you might lose parts of your car or whatever. So please don't hesitate or without reservation, give me a call and say, hey, you know, I know you don't get down my street, Bob, but this is a bad spot, or let Donna know, and we'll do everything we can to, to accommodate those because we do have a patch and we can get them done temporarily but this would give us an <coughs> opportunity to hopefully get a handle on it and and right you're right potholes are just going to develop and develop and develop and develop and if we rent this for a month no i can't tell you that the next month there won't be more potholes but we can get the majority of them to get them taken care of yep. three quarter inch red rocks 35 dollars a ton this is yeah 35 35 a ton I got in contact with Mr. Todd Taney. He's going to give me a price for bringing it up by some place in Spencer to bring it down. Yeah, that's and and he'll bring it down here. Right. And he says if we got too much. He'll take the rest of it and use it some other place. And the oil, you know, Dustin said we had enough oil, so it's just a matter of renting a machine and buying the the Red Rock. And we can just go down. Let's just use Iowa Street from 121 and go straight east. Get all the potholes all the way, and then go on another road, go all the way down until we get all the potholes. And all that we got to have a guy that runs the CDL because he's got to take that dump truck because that gravel fits in there, and there's a, a hose that goes in that rock and it sucks it down into this machine, and it's some magic that does it. It's got a burner on it and everything. Can you fix like down here by the park or where the <coughs> fire department parks? Where? On the side where the asphalt's all crumbly. Well, he edge. did. The guy that I talked to, he told me that it does not do very good when it's only got like this. But he's talking, you know, potholes like we got, but stuff that where the asphalt and the ground is real close, but it's still kind of a dip. You'll have to probably dig that out and then do it that way. But he said the real thin stuff, you got to make a hole and put this stuff down, and then it'll hold in there. So he I puts a tack well. Pardon? I think it sounds like a night night. Well, it's something I ran across, and, and uh, Mr. Evans and I are going to go down to that league of brutalities, and he told us to stop by. It's in Lincoln, so we're going to stop by, and he's going to demonstrate it to us. And, and then uh, I thought maybe in March we'll talk about it and make a decision, because April's probably the month that we want to do it in. Should you we know? put it on the agenda for next month? So yeah. we'll it's got to be 40 degrees or hotter to use it. So. Right now ain't the perfect time because you got to be a consistent 40 degrees. So. Sounds great. Yeah. And I love how you said so. That would make a lot of people happy in this town. <laughs> I know it will. So, right. If it takes two months or whatever it takes, with the manpower that it takes to yeah. yeah. But they don't. They like to sell machines instead of just renting them. So, oh, well, and that is the other story. <coughs> if we had rented for two months and we figured it, we couldn't be without it. Or maybe we could sublet it. Whatever we pay in rent, they'll take off the court total. So, so if we pay, it's like six thousand dollars a month. So. I think we should try to go for just one month, but maybe have, have people lined up that can help. And well, you, yeah, he said. Ready to go when it gets. Yeah, you gotta have. And Mr. Stephens over here has got that big, big compressor. I think it's his boy. I don't know if Jerry's or his boy. But I think if we can get it, rent that from him and blow out that with high pressure and get all that the grub away from the whole Sounds great. Well, I hope it works. Sure. Anything else? Closed session? Anything next? Closed next March 11th, right? Do we want to, do we need to go in closed session to discuss land dispersion at this point in time? Do we need to? Well, we did have, and I forgot, sorry, I forgot. We had a bid, and that's supposed from existing before, on one of the police cruisers. Did so, you talk about that today? Yeah, it's in there. My report is that I do have one, and so I don't know if it's, it's uh, I'm going to tell you the name of it, but it's $10,000 for the police cruiser without any uh, radio equipment, and that's way below its marketable value, but the person that Kids and knows that, of course, obviously it's a police cruiser and they have to do modifications to it, just like the one we was taken over to. 
uh, Niagara had, had modifications made. We had to pay for those modifications. So, it, so I don't know. It's up to you. What year is the which one is it? 2020. 2020, right? Twenty twenty Durango. Fifty five. Fifty five thousand. And you got an offer for ten thousand dollars. That's good. Well, I'm not in, in your case. Yes, I'm just like to replace it. We'd never be able to replace it for that. And plus, I will pay paying tax insurance on the flood. You know, hopefully, you know. We get the law enforcement officer and they can switch back between the two of them. That's your council decision now. If anybody in town wants a Durango for more than ten thousand dollars, they can yeah, offer. They can pay ten thousand at once. <coughs> well, okay, but anyways, if there's not anything else, we're not going to go into closed session. So then, once again, I'd like to thank the building. For being here, courtesy of Wanda, keeping our building in the condition that it is. Thank her for that. And I think there's extra cake left. If somebody needs to grab a piece of cake, please indulge yourself over there. And thank you very much for coming. And greatly appreciate um, the cooperation from every person in the city. And I, I'm really happy with the direction we're headed. I think we're doing it. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, we need a motion to adjourn. I'll pull. Make a motion. I'll pull. I'll second. Motion's been made. Over there? Yes. Miller? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes.